bien entendu, quand on nous connaît en Haïti, il y a presque passé 3 millions de personnes qui sont affectés par le tremblement de terre qui sont passé à, et il y a plus de 100 000 personnes qui sont Donc nous-mêmes qui sommes haïtiens qui sont dans la diaspora, dans la zone de Washington, qui fait partie de Virginia, Maryland et Washington DC, nous mettons un comité en place pour nous répondre à besoin de personnes qui sont sur le terrain. So I'm here in the Haitian Embassy to help. Um, so we sorry for what is happening in Haiti. It's very sad, and, um, but we are making all effort here to help uh, our people. Uh, my name is James Louis Charles. My uh, parents are originally from uh, Leogan, Haiti, and they currently live in Port-au-Prince. And uh, currently, I'm, I'm a teacher. Yeah. When when the when the earthquake hit Haiti, I was at home and I was just at home watching television, grading some papers actually, and then people started calling me, but I didn't even bother answering the, the, phone, the phone calls. And then um, I went online and I saw like a big, uh, yeah, you know, breaking news, something that says breaking news, earthquake in Haiti. And, you know, like I would imagine like most people, my, my first reaction was, <laughs> You know, it's not possible, you know, whatever. I mean, maybe something small or whatever. I, mean, I can't recall exactly what time it was, but finally I, I, I got, I saw an image online somewhere and it was uh, of the National Palace collapse. I think, to me, that's when it really hurt. It, it really shocked me. I was like, whoa, I think this is pretty serious. No, I'm Doty Joseph, I'm the head of CAP. Um, Papa, Pastor Gonel, he was the one au Cap, maman Marie Esther, mon premier, c'est mon Monsieur Nicolas, um, c'est avocat. My name is Dottie Joseph. I was born in Cape Haitian, Haiti. My father um, is from Cape Haitian, and my mother is from Mole Saint Nicholas in the north. And I'm an attorney. Some news. Initially, we didn't get all the news. We couldn't reach them for some time, but eventually, we found out that um, my aunt and her children and their families. Um, were fine in the sense that they had lost their home, um, completely destroyed, there's nothing that could be saved, but somehow they made it out um, before all of that, and they were safe. We hadn't heard from them directly, but we heard through somebody who heard, who heard through somebody else. On my father's side, however, um, there was my uncle and his wife, and they had four children. Um, fortunately, my uncle happened to be out of the house when everything happened, and his eldest son was able to run out. The daughter, um, she ran but got caught, and she was stuck in some rubble, and her father and her brother were able to um, unearth her. Unfortunately, her, his wife and the two youngest boys were still in the home. And at first, we didn't know what that meant. I mean, I didn't, we didn't get that report until three days in because I kept calling my dad and they kept calling people and it's like we haven't been able to reach anybody. So finally they were able to get in touch with them and, and that's the news that we heard. So I immediately reached out to different contacts of mine to see if we can get a search and rescue team out for them because there was hope that they might still be alive. Um, so reached out to different networks and somehow somebody was able to arrange for some rescue mission around there, although it's unclear that they actually got to the spot. Um, but then a couple days later, we got confirmation that, I guess the translated version would be, there is no more life there, Pagin la Um So, called off that mission, um, I mean, to the extent that it would be called off. A couple of days ago, we found out that my uncle was able to unearth the body of one of his sons. And there were two of them. One of them was my godson. Anyway, um, so that's um, for a while afterwards. We couldn't hear about some of the rest of my family, but we've since heard that they're okay, homeless but alive. So now we're just focused on trying to get them food and water. Um, so that's on the personal level, but I, it can't just be focused on that because so many more people were impacted. On the day of the earthquake, when it hit, I was actually having coffee with a friend of mine. Um, I went to my family's house that I was staying at here in DC, and they told me that the earthquake had hit Haiti. 
Um, they told me that as far as they knew, my brother was okay and my sister-in-law and the kids were okay, but we hadn't spoken to him. We'd only heard um, through a friend of his who supposedly had gotten in contact with him that he was okay. We didn't know about my cousins, um, and so I immediately got on the phone and, and started calling my cousins here in the States to see if they had heard from their brothers and sisters. Well, basically the way my family's trying to move forward is that right now I'm really trying indigenously to get my younger brother into the country. I've already petitioned for him um, several years ago and he's by himself because he's basically an orphan. His, my mom passed away in 05 and his dad died when he was about a baby. So basically he's been under my care. So basically I'm just trying to really just get him out of the country. So that's the main thing right now. Eleven days later, uh, two of my aunts have passed away. And uh, just the other day, my uncle buried both of his sisters with his bare hands. And he got back yesterday, and um, you could see everything on his face. He's aged, I'd say, like 15, 20 years. He is tired, he's glazed over, he looks disillusioned. He basically embodies, I, I guess, what the Haitian community just feels right now, which is just, just a numbness. And in short, that's how we've been impacted. One of the things that um, several um, Haitian American attorneys and Haitian American um, people that I've been working with and other advocacy groups have been advocating for for a long time for Haiti is TPS, Temporary Protected Status which I'm not sure why it wasn't granted even after the hurricanes because Haiti had overqualified even before this whole disaster was to immediately get the message out to all my contacts as, as, as many people I could think of um, who had um, outlets to get the word out to immediately start advocating for TPS. Um, so spent all night doing that on Facebook, different you know, listservs, um, whether it's Ivy League serv listservs, whatever I had access to to just get the word out. Um, and I think that went through very well. And then the next day, that's when you started to get all the, all the reporting about everything that had happened. Well, when we first heard about the earthquake, you know, got home, you know, bought a phone card right, right away decided to call my younger brother, who's 12 years old, over there. He couldn't get in touch with anyone. The, the phone lines were dead. And then finally, the next day, uh, thank, thank God, I got in contact with them. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning. I figured him to call. I spoke to him. He said, he's okay. And I was relieved. But then he said, man, there's a lot of people are dead. And it's just like my heart just fell at the moment. was the center of the country. You know, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a decentralized country to begin with, so pretty much everybody in Haiti rely on Port-au-Prince, and now Port-au-Prince is, is destroyed. So as, um, as we're moving, I'm, I'm concerned about what's gonna happen to Haiti when, when Haiti is no longer in the news, in the front pages of, of you know, major newspapers worldwide. Right now, with all the cameras, with, with the trendy topics and everything like that, um, everybody sort of knows about Haiti and everybody is, is learning about what a, what a wonderful place and what a rich culture it is. I just hope that that continues. Um, we're going to have very long engagements with a lot of different powers. And I just, I want us to rebuild and I want us to restore, but I also don't want us to lose the essence of of who we are as a people, which is an independent, revolutionary, um, proud people. To be honest, um, I really hope that this country continues in helping Haiti, not just this country, but the world. Haiti needs a lot of help, but also the Haitian people also need to realize that they also try to help themselves using the, the resources that other countries are giving them so they can actually build the country in a more effective way, you know, a more efficient way. 
I don't want to really get into politics, but I really want Haitian laws to change to allow Haitians Americans like you know you and I to be able to go down there and run for office. I'm not saying be president, but at least be in across the U.S., across the world, will make a commitment to take a stand so that we, as human beings, as, as one people, can help to, to recreate a country. I mean, this is an amazing opportunity. I hate to talk about it like that because it is so sad. But it is also an incredible opportunity that we have to rebuild a nation and to rebuild it in a direction that it may not have been going in before. And to rebuild it in a positive direction with care and with respect for the culture and the people. My name is James Louis Charles. My name is Kathleen Gonzalez. My name is Mark Lefrancois. My name is Dottie Joseph. And I'm a Haitian. 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 I'm a